In this screencast video lecture, we are going to see the points related to methylotrophs. They refers to multiple diverse microorganisms that have evolved with an intriguing ability to utilize the single carbon compounds, mainly methanol, methane and even certain multi-carbon compounds that are lacking carbon bonds can also be used by this organism. Those compounds includes dimethyl ether and dimethylamine. These compounds serve as a sole energy source for their growth and metabolism. Microbes that are having the ability to use this single carbon compounds are referred as methylotrophs. It includes those methylotrophs that have the ability to use methane as a single carbon source. This special group of methylotrophs are called technically by a name called methanotrophs. It utilizes only methane as a carbon source. Methanotrophs in general aerobically utilize C1 compounds, example methanol, by oxidizing them further to yield formaldehyde. Formaldehyde may be further in turn burned for making energy, that is by dissimulation of formaldehyde to carbon dioxide or they can be assimilated into the cell's biomass. Since methanol is abundant and more easily purified and cheaply available sugar containing carbon source, Methylotrophs are particularly useful there in the field of biotechnology, mainly for production of amino acids, vitamins, recombinant protein, single cell protein, coenzyme, cytochrome. However, these organisms were unable to utilize methane as a carbon source. I recollect again those organisms that has the ability to use methane as a carbon source are referred as methanotrophs. Now, we look at the examples of the methanotrophic bacteria. Methanosarsina, which has the ability to utilize as well as produce methane is an example for a methanotrophic organism. Then, Methylococcus capsulatus, which require methanes for its survival, is an example for methanotrophic organism. Next comes the yeast, that is Piscia pastris, which is biotechnologically important model organism that uses methanol as a carbon as well as energy source. Then comes another example that is methylobacterium which uses methanol that have been released there from the leaves and this methylobacterium has the ability to produce certain plant growth promoting hormones like cytokinin that in turn help in the plant growth. Now we look at in detail about methanotrophs. So, this belongs to a methylotrophic population that can be able to degrade the greenhouse gas that is methane. Organisms of this type are specifically referred as a methanotrophs. That is, they can be able to utilize and metabolize methane as their only source of carbon and energy. Most known methanotrophic organisms strictly require methane for their growth. Because of that reason, they are referred as a obligate methanotrophic population. They are commonly found in soils, ocean, muds, marshes, underground environment, even the rice paddies. The reason is rice paddies contain methanogen that can be able to produce a lot of methane. That methane can be successfully consumed by this group of methanotrophic organisms. They are of special interest there to the researchers studying in global warming related problems because they prevent a potential greenhouse gas that is methane by getting accumulated there in the environment. Methanotrophs oxidize methane by first initiating reduction of oxygen to water and subsequent oxidation of methane to a more active species that is methanol. This is facilitated by using oxidoreductase enzyme such as methane monooxygenases. In general, two types of methane monooxygenases have been discovered. One is a soluble methane monooxygenase which is found there in the cell cytoplasm and another category is particulate methane monooxygenase which attached to the cell membrane. Cells containing particulate methane monooxygenase demonstrated to have high growth abilities as well as high affinity for the methane. They characteristically found to contain certain internal membranes inside the cell system within which methane oxidation usually occurs. Here, methane is oxidized to formaldehyde 
and formaldehyde could be further assimilated in the cells by using two different kinds of pathway. Based on that, this group of methanotrophic organisms are divided into two categories. One is a type 1 methanotrophic organism that utilizes ribulose monophosphate pathway. The organism come under this category includes methylobacter, methylomicrobium, methylococcus and methylomonas. Whereas the other group of carbon assimilation is a type 2 methanotrophs which uses serine pathway to assimilate the formaldehyde. Here the organisms includes methylocystis, methylocinus, methylocilla and methyloacidifilum. Further, we look at the details about the other methylotrophic organism. So, again the definition, any microorganism that can able to utilize one carbon compound such as a methane, methanol, methylamine as a sole carbon energy source for their growth are commonly referred as a methylotrophs. This term also includes about the methanotrophs details of those which we have seen earlier. Other bacteria that can be regarded as a methylotrophs includes a hypomicrobium that can able to grow on methanol as a sole carbon source. And a list of heterotrophic bacteria that has the ability to utilize methanol or methylamine have been listed there which includes the gram positive bacteria and even gram negative bacteria. In the gram positive some specific examples of streptomyces that are all commonly present there in the leaf surface as well as in the soil system. If you look at there into the gram negative bacteria, very typical methylotrophic group of bacteria which we are going to study in detail is the last one that is a methylobacterium. All of these bacteria that have been studied found to use serine pathway for carbon assimilation from formaldehyde. They can able to grow by aerobic or nitrate based respiration. However, it is important here to emphasize that none of the genera that I have listed there under the category of methylotrophic bacteria, non-methanotrophic methylobacteria or non-methanotrophic methylotrophs were able to use methane gas as a carbon source. That is, none of them found to produce the enzyme methane monooxygenase. Most of these organisms are coming under the category of the facultative methylotrophs, meaning in addition to using methanol or one carbon source, they can also be able to use certain other organic compounds for their growth. These compounds include sugars, amino acids and organic acid. One of the interesting habitat for methylotrophic bacteria is the surface of the leaves. Methanol is the one which is derived from the degradation of methoxylated compounds from the pectin that is produced there in the plant system. Strains especially adapted to grow on the plant leaf surface use this volatile methanol that have been released there during the degradation of pectin. This organism found to have carotenoids in them that gives a pink pigmentation for this organism. As they live in the leaf surface which is commonly exposed to sunlight, this carotenoid helps in protection of cells against the harsh UV radiation that could be coming out there from the sunlight. Because of the presence of the pink pigment, they are commonly referred as a pink pigmented facultative methylotrophs. Finally, we see the application of this methylotrophs there in the different fields. Say for example, I have already told that methanotroph is a subset of group that comes under methylotrophy which can be able to use only a single carbon molecule that is methane. Here, they are having a lot of application there in the field of environmental microbiology, especially the strains belonging to methylocystis that employ type 2 type of a methanotrophic metabolism were able to co-metabolize the other substrate when they are present there in the environment. Say, you look at the diagram there. Here, the main substrate is methane that could be metabolized there by the methane monooxygenase enzyme. At the same time, a environmental pollutant, say for example, trichloroethane that is serving as a co-substrate that is methane monooxygenase can able to use methane apart from that they can also able to use the other substrate that is trichloroethane that is the reason that particular compound is referred as a co-substrate. So when methane is oxidized by methane monooxygenase the co-substrate that is trichloroethane will also be broken down further into formate and dichloroacetate and glyoxylate 
and that particular pollutant molecule can be completely decomposed there in the environment when methylocystis is growing there using methane as a substrate. The next one is application of methylotrops in the field of agriculture microbiology. Here, as I already told, methylobacterium is a group of organism which can able to produce pink pigment because of that they are referred as a pink pigmented facultative methylotrops. They are having a ability to utilize the methanol that have been commonly coming out due to the degradation of the pectin by pectin methyl esterase enzyme. They could be present there in the leaf surface, even they can be easily identified there near the stomata and when this particular organism is isolated from leaf and it is grown there in the plate, it will be showing a lot of pink pigmentation there which refers to the carotenoids produced by this organism. You can able to see a plate which contains a lot of pink pigmented colonies. This is actually a practical that has been carried out by your previous batch of students. You can also able to see your previous batch of students have isolated a methylobacterium, namely methylobacterium terraniae and that 16S rRNA gene sequence of that organism has been deposited there in the year 2014 itself during a practical session. Like that, previous batch of students have identified this methylobacterium from the leaf surface in their practical classes also. You look at here the practical application of this methylobacterium as a biofertilizer for the rice crop there to mainly mitigate the drought stress there. Spraying of these biofertilizers once in a 15 days from the vegetation stage could help to protect the crops from solar radiation and enhance the growth as well as yield by 8% when this methylobacterium has been applied there to the plant system. So by using this spray of methylobacterium in a particular year, they have saved a lot of crops there in the Kaveri Delta region. They have proved that the application of methylobacterium improves the chlorophyll intensity and increases the leaf surface area. The leaf surface area increase is mainly due to the production of cytokinin and it also has a lot of other plant growth promoting activities which improves the plant growth and metabolism.